Hello, this is James from xrobots.co.uk. Today is a quick update about the thighs for my full-size Iron Man armour. And I'm also going to be doing some vacuum forming to make some replacement pieces for the fiberglass casts. A big box has arrived. Let's have a look inside. Ghostbusters! No, it isn't a proton pack. It is a dust extractor, which I now have to put together. Rather bigger than I thought it was going to be. Ah, instructions. It's a bit like self-assembly furniture. Which I'm really good at. Yep. Right. So here it is in the shed. Now the way this thing works is obviously sucks um, air in here, it's high volume, low pressure, so it's not like a vacuum cleaner that can really suck the dust out of the carpet, but it does move a lot of air. That's why the um, inlet is so big, that's four inches. The air gets sucked all around this pipe into the pump, which is in the black horizontal section. Basically, the big bag on the top is actually a filter, so the air gets sucked in this direction. The bag filters out um, any chunks, and then we'll see gravity um, makes the chunks fall down into the dust collecting bag below. So it's actually meant for quite big chips like, um, for instance, sawdust from a circular saw or wood chips. It's not meant for fine dust, um, but basically it's still better than just letting the dust go into the air. So um, obviously I'll just keep the bag clean and so on because it is going to get dusty, but it still works pretty well and I've not seen any dust coming through it in the tests that I've done. So still better than um, still better than nothing. So let's give that a go. I've got a big drum sander in the in um, a drill press here. I've also got a piece of Iron Man's thigh. So let's just see um, how well that works. Now I'm still going to put on a respirator because I'm sanding fiberglass. So let me just grab that and then we'll give it a go. So hopefully you can see dust going straight into the dust extractor and not filling up the shed, which is what happened before. Here's my next favourite sanding tool, which is a Black & Decker power file, which is like a little belt sander. Um, it's got a dust collector of its own, which doesn't work very well, but basically due to the fact that uh, it just goes round and it takes a lot off, it does create a lot of dust. So got my dust extractor hose again, so let's give that a go and see how well it works. That seems excellent, normally dust just goes everywhere. So here's one of the thighs, which I've started doing some clean-up on. Um, probably the worst parts of these side panels. Um, as I mentioned in one of the previous videos, I'm actually going to make replacements for those, which fit on over the top. And those are going to be used to latch the two halves um, of the thigh together. So uh, that it actually holds them onto the strapping system that I've got underneath. The way I'm going to do that is with a vacuum form. <clears throat> so 
So this is my vacuum form table which I made. And I've made a wooden vacuum form mould which uh, kind of is going to fit over that. So basically I'm going to make a plastic shell out of uh, sheet material, vacuum form it, make two of them and we're going to stick those over the top there. So this one will be cleaned up the best I can but this will be the final piece of the suit which is obviously uh, perfectly flat because I've worked on it with sanding blocks and so on. It's much easier to uh, start from scratch basically rather than sand and fill this one and it'll also cover the seam line. So let's have a look at the vacuum forming table. So this is my vacuum forming setup. Basically it will turn a sheet of plastic like this into um, a shape of whatever you put on the table. So there's been um, quite a lot of exposure for this uh, setup, especially my heating setup, which is a heater in the bottom of a box which is covered with foil. It's an infrared quartz patio type of heater, um, which basically only heats what it shines light on. So the foil acts to diffuse the light um, in this box and it heats the plastic that's in this frame and then we lift it up and put it down over the table which is connected to a vacuum cleaner which sucks air through all the holes plastic soft and basically it uh, forms the sheet over the piece of wood so I've already made two videos about this vacuum forming table um, an original one that shows how it works and another one a follow up on safety because a lot of people commented about having a heater in a wooden box and so on and this has also been featured on Hackaday magazine blog and it's also on um, Adam Savage's Tested.com blog and he mentioned it in his podcast and Adam Savage is the guy from Mythbusters so there's already been quite a lot of discussion about this so um, before anyone comments about safety of having a heater in a wooden box probably best to watch the other videos and the follow up video and uh, have a look at the links on my website so basically I'm going to put the heater on, heat up the sheet of plastic and then we'll form it over the buck I'm just using a Dyson here with the hose connected to the bottom of the table there's a cavity in between these three sheets that make up the table and that pulls air through all the holes here's the heater obviously this piece goes over the top and it softens the plastic um, as I said there's already been quite a lot of discussion over safety um, yes it's on a wooden floor in a wooden box but it is a patio stroke workshop heater so there'd be no use if it's set fire to everything around it basically heat comes out of the top not the bottom um, it's fairly warm it takes about three minutes to soften the plastic and I've used it for years and had no issues whatsoever so I have a stopwatch here I happen to know that black plastic takes about three minutes to soften adequately uh, white plastic takes slightly longer because um, it's reflective. I've never tried clear or any other colours. The plastic I'm using is 2 mil thick hips, which is styrene sheet. Um, and I've never tried any other types of plastic, but I'd imagine you could use ABS or acrylic. See the plastic starting to melt. Um, obviously we just need to soften it, not melt it to liquid. Obviously I think if we left it on that fire it'd probably uh, catch on fire. We're up to uh, about a minute and a half. See it going soft, and the main, the important thing is um, heating it uniformly all over, um, which is why um, it's kind of an issue to use any other type of heating method. It's too big to fit in a domestic oven, so you'd probably otherwise have to buy something like a pizza oven or some other industrial oven. Um, but doing it this way is a really effective way to heat the plastic uniformly all over, basically because the infrared light coming out of the heater. It's diffused all over the sheet by the foil in the box that it's on. Okay, so that's three minutes of heating. The plastic's looking uniformly heated all over. So I'm just going to turn off the heater, turn on the vacuum, lift up this frame and put it on here, and then that should form the shape. So you should be able to see there that we've got the shape nicely formed in a nice shiny piece of plastic. Obviously we'll paint that with primer and paint it up in the correct colours and once it's been cut out. So I just need to make one more of these and then we can cut them out um, and clean them up and then we'll have the finished pieces. So there's the shell, we just turn that up the other way, if that's any easier to see. Um, Yep, so that's the finished vac form, and I've just got the other one is heating up at the moment. 
So here are my two vacuum forms and I've got these tin snips which can cut through sheets of metal and I'm just going to do a loose trim around the edge and then basically clean them up on a belt sander so we can get nice straight lines all the way around. So there's my loosely trimmed parts and I'm just going to take the edges off on the belt sander that I've got here. So here are the two thigh pieces which I've made which uh, in nice glossy plastic. Here's my thigh at the moment, and obviously that's just gonna fit over there. It's going to be um, fitted on slightly spaced away, so it looks like a separate mechanical piece, which is roughly how it was in the movie. And as I said before, that'll also act to latch the two halves of the thigh together. And once they're fitted onto the strapping system, which will be similar to the way I did the shins. So we've actually got a metal system which uh, you strap your legs into and then obviously these pieces, the rigid pieces, fit on over the top. So we're going to do that with the thighs as well once I've finished doing some sanding and clean up. And that'll be uh, what I'm doing in the next video. So if you want to see all the videos about this, there are a couple of playlists in my channel, one for all of the Iron Man build and one that's specifically about the strapping system. So subscribe and check out for updates and check out my other videos.